search and methods of thinking. Okay, uh, in learning this uh, chapter, we hope that we can explain the role, positions, and relationship of, of logic with philosophy and explain various errors in thinking and reasoning of fallacy. And then we can elaborate on a variety of methodologies that enrich the development of more complex science. And then we can describe development, uses, and differences of the two main approaches in logic, which are deduction and induction. And then after that, we can analyze the methodology of acquiring knowledge and generating new knowledge. These are the contents of logic and preventions of fallacy thinking error. And then uh, after that, we have the deduction and introduction, and then different methodologies of acquiring knowledge, and then development of methodology of knowledge science, and then scenarios and case studies. These are the learning approach of this chapter. First lecture, blended learning, and then student centered learning or ICL. And then uh, we will talk uh, about the introduction to logic. First, uh, we will talk about definitions. There are three different meanings of topic. First, logic and language. Set, uh, it's talk about logos or Greek. This is a correct word or thought. And then there is nataka. It's from Arab language. It's speak or speak. And then after that, there is logic. Logic. It's in English language. Uh, it means to think properly. And then the secondly, there is logic and terminology. There are two features who state their assumptions uh, uh, in this uh, definitions. First, there is Ibn Sina. He said that uh, logic is a science that controls human thinking from the errors and distortions while thinking. And then secondly, there is Al Ghazali. He said that logic is a knowledge that can distinguish between a knowledge that leads to truth and belief with a knowledge that brings to mind the illusions of wrong and error. And then thirdly, there is uh, the real definitions of logic. It says that logic is the field of research on reasonable inference. It is a process for reaching a conclusion based on a systematic and reliable set of assumptions. And then, what will logic matter us? Uh, without the valid reasons, we cannot know whether something is true or, or trustworthy. And then, uh, in knowing the logic, we have a knowledge of how to judge something, whether it is an argument or a reason. And then, it helps us to judge the good and the bad. Also, it's important to make sure we that the to make sure that we think correctly. And then, logic is not just an opinion opinions, but it assesses arguments or reasons. And then, it has certain principles and it has a certain criteria. Next, we move to the history of logic science. The first feature uh, is the philosopher who first uh, would who is use the name of Mantic uh, or use the and has a um, meaning of logic uh, uh, or in the sense of art of debate. His name is Cicero, and then after that there is Alexander Aphrodisias. Uh, he was the first to use the word logic in the definition of science that investigated whether or not human thinking was correct. And then uh, those two uh, features that we talk about is the feature that involved in Stoics. Stoics is one of the great Greek logic school. Uh, the Stoics adopt the Megarian logic and systemize it. And then uh, there is the most active member of the school, uh, and it was Sarsipus. Uh, actually, I don't know how to really spell it. Uh, and then 
There is no complete works, uh, complete works by the Megarians or the early Stoics, uh, and most of accounts are relied to the latter sources, including permanent, prominently Diogenes Lateritus, Sextus Empiricus, Galen, Aulus, Gallius, Alexander of Aphrodisias, and Cicero. And then three significant contributions of the Stoic schools were uh, their account of modality, their theory of the material conditional, and their account of meaning and truth. Uh, after this, I would like to pass the presentations to my friends. After. That's all from me. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. So, Bismillah, Assalamualaikum. My name is Afif. <coughs> I will explain about the logic. So, first, for logic or mantic science, Aristotle was the primary teacher to teach about the logic or mantic. To get a deeper look, before Aristotle existed logic, logic is a science that is systematic science emerged since Aristotle. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. So, one of the classical Greek philosophies adapted by Muslim scholars in the early 2nd century of Jiriahir was either magic or logical science. Like other classical science, mantic science was developed by Muslim scholars with distinctive form and characters. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. Distinctive form and characters that differed from Aristotle logic. Mantic science is very much related to philosophy and theology, even being separate part of the two disciplines. Next slide. So I will explain about the logic role in real life. First is the faeda, or in English we call it methodology. So it makes person capable of distinguishing between good and bad. This is the most fundamental benefit of logic science. And can make a person think smart and have their own evidence for arguing and refuting words that are unreasonable and not easily fooled or manipulated by others. Third is, sharpens a person's thinking ability and become more effective through thinking, analyzing, and solving problems scientifically. Fourth is, makes a person able to put things in the right place and do things on time. Slide. So the second logic role, second logic role in life is pengenalan, which is in BM, but in in English is introduction. So it is a tool of introduction and a foundation for all other science, such as akidah or faith, science, science and morals. It is the gift of human reasoning shows the role of logic in life. It serves as a tool to test the field of truth from the possibility of error. Uh, it is a rule for evaluating all of the early ideas of the human mind in order to produce the correct theory and practice and to achieve the desired goal because the habitat and thinking of the mind will continue until the end of life. Logic is essential as a guide to human life when thinking and making decisions. Next slide, please. So the third, role, the third role of logic in real life is it plays an important role in the issues of Islamic rule. Uh, it is used in a special debates and special talks to argue with atheists and the like. It makes a person capable of criticizing all areas of science. One of the theory-based knowledge that forms the basis for evaluating and knowing information that is unknown through existing information. It prevents a person from being possessed by lust, instinct, and be too wise. And the sixth one is guide an individual towards strengthening the faith and acknowledging the oneness of Allah Almighty. Next slide, please. So we move on to hujahan, or in bahasa in English we call it as argument. What is argument? Uh, Argument is a proposition that is the conclusion of an argument or proof premise. Arguments can be made up of several prepositions. So, proposal is the affirmation or interpretation and declaration in a statement, whether true or false. 
Submission are not the same as opinion. Submissions contains a series of statements in which one of them is conclusion. For example, premise 1, all human breathe. And then premise 2, Ahmad is breathing. And then we can conclude that Ahmad is a human being because all humans breathe. Okay, next slide please. So this is the uh, link you can watch in your own uh, leisure time to gain further knowledge about deductive and inductive argument. And next slide, please. So we uh, proceed to know about the example of deductive and inductive argument. So for deductive argument, it is a special conclusion is made from a general statement. So from general, 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 we conclude it becomes special. Like this, premise one, all humans breathe. Premise two, Ahmad is breathing. This is special. All humans breathe is special too. And then we conclude it into general statement, which is Ahmad is a human being. So the difference between, uh, oh yeah, so deductive is, uh, apa? you can, the difference between inductive is that it is general conclusion are drawn from specific statement. So deductive is special, 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 become one, become general, and then inductive is general, 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 become special. Like this, premise one, Fatimah wears a hijab, a general, and then premise two, Fatimah is a Muslim, general two. And then we can conclude, become special, all Muslims wear hijab. And then next slide, please. Oh, uh, I think, uh, thank you, I will pass to my teammate, Zafran now. Okay, uh, uh, hello, and assalamualaikum everyone. So right now I want to further explain about the inductive and deductive argument. So basically, just like Afif said, the inductive argument move from specific to general. Like in this slide, we can see specific, specific, specific into general. And deductive argument move from general to specific, specific, specific. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I want to explain about fallacy or thinking errors. So false argument used to mislead or influence those who believe them to be true or legitimate. That is the definition of fallacy. So to make our uh, more known about the fallacy, uh, we can see in the picture that two is a number one is also a number and the final conclusion is two equals to one so uh, it's not it's true that two is a number one is a number but two is equal to one it's not true lah. <laughs> uh, any other uh, any other example we can say that tigers and lions are ruthless killer and house cats must also be ruthless killer uh, due to their same in their family tigers lion and home house cats they have the same family but yeah it's it's not true uh, house cat is not ruthless killer <laughs> and then uh well, see the statement the statement at the outset may seem right that and legitimate like i said that two is a number one is a number it sounds legitimate but the premise or the conclusion is not invalid yeah the knowledge of logic will help us to distinguish the basis of the proposition next Okay, so uh, we have two uh, point of fallacy. The first point is informal fallacy, or the other word is relevance. Fallacy of relevance. The second point is formal formal fallacy, or fallacy of ambiguity. Next.
So here's the further explanation about the categories of fallacy, which we can categorize into two points, fallacy of relevance and fallacy of ambiguity. So first, I will explain about fallacy of relevance. So what is fallacy of relevance? Fallacy of relevance is argument whose premise or not logically relevant to the true or false conclusion. Uh, there's uh, some example. The example is an offender is kept in custody because he is old or because he is an orphan. A good person is someone who doesn't talk much and always agree. Yeah, as I said that in the in the definition of fallacy of relevance, it's yeah, it's we cannot uh, define that this is true or false. Like uh, in the last example, a good person is someone who doesn't talk much and always agrees. Uh, uh, we we cannot uh, measure their uh, or he or her is a good person from their uh, behavior that he doesn't talk much, right? And then the second fallacy is fallacy of ambiguity. Fallacy of ambiguity is involves some confusion over meaning. Specifically, over the members referred to by a term used in the argument. For example, the chase drama between the police and the criminal lasts for an hour. The fact may be correct if the police and criminal are chasing each other, but it is doubtful that police ethics do not allow police to run away when pursued by criminal. Uh, next, in the next slide, I will further explain about fallacy of relevance. Nah, yeah. There is a, this is the type of fallacy of relevance. Uh, the first point is appeal to emotion, or in other words, uh, argumentum at populum. So what, what is, this type or what is this point uh, talks about in wait uh, in a more general fashion the appeal to emotion relies upon emotively charged language to arouse strong feelings that may lead an audience to accept its conclusion. So, for example, as a clear thinking residents of our fine state have already realized, the governor plan for financing public education is nothing but the bloody fetch wolf of socialism cleverly disguised in the harmless ships plotting of concern for children. Therefore, the governor plan is bad public policy. The problem here is that although the flowery language of the premise might arouse strong feeling in many members of its attendant audience, the widespread occurrence of these feelings has nothing to do with the truth of the conclusion. Uh, so for the second point is the appeal to authority or in other words, is argumentum ad fere chundium. Each of the next three fallacies, uh, sorry, each of the one fallacies before this appeal to emotion, the mistaken supposition that there is some connection between the truth of a proposition and some future of the person who asserts or denies. In appeal to authorities, the, op the opinion of someone famous or accomplished in another area of expertise is supposed to guarantee the truth of a conclusion. For example, 
Federal Reserve Chair Alan Grispan believed that spiders are insects. Therefore, spiders are insects. As a pattern of reasoning, this is clearly mistaken. No proposition must be true because some individual, however talented or successful, happens to believe it. Even in areas where they have some special knowledge or skill, expert authorities could be mistaken. We may accept their testimony as inductive evidence, but never as deductive proof of the truth of a conclusion. Personality is in irrelevant to truth. And the third point is ad hominem argument. The mirror image of the appeal to authority is the ad hominem argument in which where we are encouraged to reject a proposition because it is the stated opinion of someone regarded as reputable in some way. This can happen in several different ways, but I'll involve the claim that the proposition must be false because of who believe it to be true. For example, Harold maintained the legal age for drinking beer should be 18 instead of 21. But we all know that Harold is 19 years old and would like to drink legally or believe that legal age for voting should be 21, not 18, or doesn't understand the law any better than the rest of us. Therefore, the legal age for drinking should be 21 instead 18. In any of its verities, the ad hominem fallacy asks us to adopt position on the truth of conclusion for no better reason than that someone believes in opposite. But the proposition that person believes can be true, and the attendant conclusion false, even if the person is unsavory or has a stake in the issue or holds inconsistent belief or shares a common flaws with us. Again, personality is irrelevant to truth. The fourth point is appeal to ignorance, or in other words, argumentum at ignoratium. An appeal to ignorance proposes that we accept the truth of proposition unless an opponent can prove otherwise. Thus, for example, no one has conclusively proven that there is no intelligent life on the moon of Jupiter. Therefore, there is intelligent life on the moons of Jupiter. But of course, the absence of evidence against a proposition is not enough to secure its truth. What we don't know would nevertheless be so. The last point is irrelevant conclusion, or in other words, ignoritio elenji. The fallacy of the irrelevant conclusion tries to establish the truth of a proposition by offering an argument that actually provides support for an entirely different conclusion. For example, our children should have ample attention from their parents. Parents who work full-time cannot give ample attention to their children. Therefore, mothers should not work full-time. Uh, here, the premise might support some conclusion, but working parents generally, about working parents generally, but do not secure the truth of a conclusion fo focus on women alone and not on men, although clearly fallacious. This procedure may succeed in distracting in its audience from the point that is really at issue. Next. So here's the activity. I think we can skip this part. Next. <laughs> So 
is the method of acquiring knowledge uh, according to Imam Al-Ghazali. Imam Al-Ghazali is philosopher, uh, theologians, jurist, logicians. Uh, the methods of acquiring knowledge. Uh, there is a sense, mind, institution, inspiration, revelation, practice and experience, learn and study. Next, and I think that's all from me. I will pass to my other teammates. Um, okay, so from now on here, uh, we have already seen that the human senses that human have are this five factors, which as uh, we are, as we have seen here, uh, limited on the capabilities and more uh, vulnerable to the errors. So uh, I think there's one thing which is uh, missing here. That is uh, testing. As we have known, the test, we just test to the fullest, and it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's kind of, uh, uh, we test unknown to the food. So it's kind of sense. Uh, Amelia, the next, the next slide. And uh, as, as we are in human, we have always use our mind, which we think and use it to intellect as a human advantage over the other creatures, which is we identify to the other creatures or the other living things in our uh, intellectual intellectuality, uh, which we mostly differentiate and separate, which is human or Animal, and from that on, there is also an ability, which is we, uh, which is we know the uh, the the difference the difference between uh, humanness and the weaknesses and the limitations or the boundaries uh, every creature or every living thing has. Especially, we are human. The next episode. Amelia. Um, in, in here, uh, the institution, the institution is which are formal and informal. The human can study and research out the fields of sciences. Uh, as all humans has uh, have passed through, uh, I'm mostly taken off uh, schools, universities, and other places like mosques or seminaries, wherever education can be found. We have known that the institutions we uh, can teach us what kind of sciences, everything. There are some other places which is not be studied. Uh, just science, but studied uh, other things. Any other solution? So, uh, inspiration is based on mostly uh, motivating, like just uh, inspiring the uh, the others. I mean, intuition, intuition is for forecasters or uh, for scientists, which is uh, gifty, gifty, giftedness, uh, which is means it is something that uh, for us is mostly be inspired to the uh, intuitions. So the negative research. So uh, when it is becomes a uh, revelation. As we have known, uh, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, delivered us the religion, which is uh, which is came, uh, came from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, 
who uh, uh, represented it by Angel Jibril, and carry, uh, Angel Jibril carried the religion which is delivered by our Prophet, and our Prophet spread to the whole world, who is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger from Allah. So we know that Prophet is, um, as we have seen, uh, delivered uh, religions, and our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is different from the other uh, prophets. He was sent, sent to the all human being, to the uh, to the whole world, where the other prophets are limited on their clans, their tribes, where our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to the whole world. So the next episode. So when it became uh, the knowledge, uh, can person uh, be gained on to uh, practicing, which is studying or doing uh, frequently something that is going to be teached on, or uh, making a mistake. Mistake can be an experience when you just didn't know anything and try to anything you didn't know, you will get something that it's not just uh, you, 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 you know before. So I mean, like experience, mostly it can be uh, something that wasn't known where did by and knowing after it made it. So uh, practicing and experiencing something that wasn't known can make you or uh, give you to gain a knowledge. So gaining uh, a knowledge can be uh, practicing by something frequently and making something you didn't know, which can be tomorrow uh, an experience you have known. The next episode. So as human, we learn and study. Uh, when it becomes learning and studying, Humans can gain knowledge through the process of learning. As we were childhood, as our childhood is, we studying uh, first classes up to university. Until that, we live it. So here, Imam Ghazali said that even animals can be taught and trained. For example, uh, if I try to figure out uh, one animal that can be taught and trained, for example, the dog. When you just uh, train it and uh, look it after, every day can learn you something which is be more politely. So uh, in here, uh, learning and study can be in humanist something can gain a knowledge. As we explained previous, uh, knowledge comes from uh, practicing and experiencing. Uh, frequently, which is doing uh, mostly. The next episode. So, uh, the activity and philosophy nuclear through community. So, thinking, learning, and idea are be uh, mostly activities which can be uh, to reach the purge. The next episode. So really, Tanamakase, we think our group uh, has finished it. Uh, one more thing, I think uh, our coordinator, Amelia, may have said something or... Amelia? Okay, so that's all from our group. Thank you. Uh, I will stop sharing my screen from now on. Yeah, okay, thank you for the presentation. Oh, nice presentation. Nice presentation. So, uh, I hope you can understand uh, the basics in this 
uh, in this uh, topics about the the arts and method of thinking. Uh, how do you think? Uh, so the, for you must you must give you must divide between the real thinking and the fallacy thinking and then you must know how the the logic one and the fallacy one okay and the methodology how to gain knowledge uh, that's the fundamental in this chapter okay uh, so now uh, i want to show you a video uh, show you a video so that we can uh, watch it together to more to to gain more understanding about uh, policy hope you can all hear me Okay, if you cannot hear, you can tell me. Yeah, I start now. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Can someone respond? Do you understand the video? Uh, doctor, uh, we I think we cannot see anything. You cannot see the video? Yeah, it's blank. Oh, I think you all see the video. So, motion video screen one. You can see the video? Ah yes, no. Okay, okay. We 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 move. Uh, we move from one video to one to another. Okay, you you watch the video and then you tell me what you uh, what you understand from the video. You cannot hear. You just tell me. Uh, you can hear or whatever. Okay. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Okay, what do you understand from that video? The kind of uh, uh, what we call the you want to you want to uh, you want to get into your mind to to uh, uh, to say this thing is the best. Uh, okay. okay, what you understand from that video? The cable one. Uh, people people make assumption. Okay. Like the when when he get when he got the eye patch, people uh, think that he is tough, so he get ch chased. No, the the main the core in this in that video. You missed the call before before that. 
uh, apa ya? Yes. The, the advertisement is only about the cable. Uh, the cable uh, company between the direct TV. Uh, you, you see from this beginning? Okay. Yeah, I will, I, wish, I will let you watch one again. Okay. When your cable company keeps you on hold. Okay, when a cable company with you uh, on hold. You get angry. You get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. That's all how we begin and from the cable company. So, when the cable company keep him on hold, and then he get angry, and then he we'll get blow angry. off steam. Accidents happen. He get angry. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. You're tough huh? When people okay. think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and okay. This is the people think you're tough. Know. Tough. And when people want to see how tough you wake up in a roadside ditch, don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get... Okay, this <laughs> uh, this is the main, the core for this video. Get rid of cable. Okay, don't use cable TV. Use direct TV. Uh, that's the message. Uh, but they make the advertisement look real. Huh? Uh, that's the way called fallacy. Huh? That looks like real uh, but uh, absolutely, absolutely is uh, not real uh, or not not something uh, what we call is over uh, over maybe over over eating uh, over claim uh, that's what the fallacy how they they get the fallacy into our mind uh, so they can fluent influence us to to buy yes, to to use their product. Okay, that's how fallacy works. Okay, can you understand the first video? Yes. Okay, fine. Okay, the the second video, you must uh, find the core of fallacy yourself. Huh? I I will let you. Rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Okay. Call one eight hundred Direct TV. Okay, the second one. Second video. Watch carefully. You will understand the the ingredients. This place is great. Many cute guys here. Mm -hmm. Do you smell bacon? Oh yeah, it's a bacon club chalupa. Oh, yeah. Guys love bacon. <laughs> That's really gonna work. Come on. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Hi. What is that you're wearing? It's... It's, it's intoxicating. Taco Bell's Bacon Club Chalupa is back. Bacon lovers rejoice. It smells good. Okay. What are you stand from that? Okay. <coughs> Yes. Uh, anybody can answer, respond? What you understand from that uh, advertisement from that island? Um, professor, I think they use uh, deception to to set up a scenario that would be very difficult to be a reality, just to like advertise their point. Yes. But from that Taco Bell advertisement? Yeah, yes, the same as the first one. I mean, no one would, would like, would get to like you just because you smell like bacon. Yes. Who carry bacon in their purse? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Although the bacon is smell very, very good. Uh, but who, who carry bacon in their purse? They must be eat uh, to be eat to be eaten, not not to carry in your purse, uh, in your purse, okay, in their purse. 
Okay, uh, then we move on to the third video. I see you all kind of. When the going gets tough and it's just not your day, let the fresh scent take you to a fresher place. There are some lizards that are eating your legs. Okay. Uh, it's all the same, huh? the same. Until first, as football player, until when gets until he get no leg, yeah, because the freshness of the I don't I don't know maybe the perfume or something like that. And it's just not your day. Let the fresh scent take you to a fresher place. There are some lizards that are eating your legs. So what's matter in that is the freshness, uh, not your leg. <laughs> okay. okay, then uh, the... Okay, that's the comedy. You all can hear or you can watch? Clear? Or not clear? Clear, clear enough. Okay. Because uh, yeah. there are some notification notification uh, appears in my the top, so that's why I was. United States. Sarah Palin, taking aim at your decision to restrict uh -huh. uh, use of nuclear weapons, uh, your pledge not to strike nations, non-nuclear nations, uh, who abide by the non-proliferation treaty. Here's what she said. She said it's unbelievable. No other administration would do it. And then she likened it to kids on a playground. She said, you're like a kid who says, punch me in the face, and I'm not going to retaliate. Yeah. Your response? Uh, I really have no response to that. Last I checked, Sarah Palin's not much of an expert on uh, nuclear uh, issues. Appeal, no false authority. So all these seem the same. Get a Sony. The technology in their cameras and camcorders makes it easy to get the best shot. Exactly. What do you know about cameras and camcorders? Really? Does that child have a beard? Get one real quick, maybe. It's easy to get the best shot with Sony cameras and camcorders. Okay, nice. Oh, okay. Okay, then this is the example. Vegetables are bad for you. Oh, here we go. After okay. all, the Why dinosaurs ate plants, and we all know what happened to them. Let's pause for a moment. That argument was ridiculous, and that's because it contained a logical fallacy. A logical fallacy is any kind of error in uh, is that from vegetables somebody? are bad for you. After all, the dinosaurs ate plants. And we all know what happened to them. Uh, let's pause for a moment. That argument was ridiculous. And that's... Yes, that fallacy. Yeah. You, you, to, to understand the way different from the, the, the real... Because facts. it contained a logical fallacy. A logical fallacy is any kind of error in reasoning that renders an argument invalid. They can involve distorting or manipulating facts, drawing false conclusions, or distracting you from the actual issue at hand. In theory, it seems like they'd be pretty easy to spot, but this isn't always the case. Sometimes logical fallacies are used intentionally to try and win a debate. In these cases, they're often presented by the speaker with a certain level of confidence, and in doing so, they're more persuasive. If they sound like they know what they're talking about, we're more likely to believe them even if their stance doesn't make complete logical sense. One common logical fallacy is the false cause. This is when someone incorrectly identifies the cause of something. In my argument, I stated that the dinosaurs became extinct because they ate vegetables. Now, while these two separate things did happen, a diet of vegetables was not the cause of their extinction. Maybe you've heard false cause more commonly represented by the phrase, correlation does not equal causation meaning that just because two things occurred around the same time, it doesn't mean that one caused the other. Yes. 
A straw man is when someone takes an argument and misrepresents it so that it's easier to attack. For example, let's say Callie is advocating that sporks should be the new standard for silverware since they're more efficient. Madeline responds that she's shocked Callie would want to outlaw spoons and forks and put millions out of work at the fork and spoon factories. A straw man is frequently used in politics in an effort to discredit another politician's views on a particular issue. Begging the question is a type of circular argument where someone includes the conclusion as a part of their reasoning. George says, ghosts exist because I saw a ghost in my closet. His conclusion is ghosts exist. His premise also assumes that ghosts exist. Rather than assuming that ghosts exist from the get-go, George should be using evidence and reasoning to prove that they exist. The false dilemma, or false dichotomy, is a logical fallacy where a situation is presented as being an either-or option when in reality there are more possible options available than just the chosen two. Rebecca rings the doorbell, but Ethan doesn't answer. She then thinks, oh, Ethan must not be home. Rebecca posits that either Ethan answers the door or he isn't home. In reality, he could be sleeping, doing some work in the backyard, or taking a shower. Most logical fallacies can be spotted by thinking critically. Make sure to ask questions. Is logic at work here, or is it simply rhetoric? Does their proof actually lead to the conclusion they're proposing? By applying critical thinking, you'll be able to detect logical fallacies in the world around you and prevent yourself from using them as well. Okay, the second GCF video. Now creating opportunities for a better The last video. Okay. With the rise of new online media and the sea of information it has brought along with it, readers and informed citizens alike are provided with the difficult task of discerning fact from fiction and accurate reasoning from faulty one. Trump, Russia, the FBI, the Paris attack, it just never stops. Every day there is a new viral story that is surrounded by an avalanche of comments and opinions from all sides of the political aisle. But which one makes more sense? And how can we truly know? Well, thankfully, we have the tools of logic to guide us in this arduous quest for truth. First of all, it is important to recognize that no matter how smart you think you are, we are all imperfect beings, subject to inadvertently committing silly mistakes. This is where logical fallacies arise. Now, although this may sound like a doomed picture I'm painting to you where we're nothing but dumb creatures trying to figure out an infinitely complex world, you need not look at that side of the coin. On the contrary, I would say, we should be thankful for the fact that we recognize our own mistakes and can use our knowledge of logical fallacies as shields against stupid arguments. Due to the importance of recognizing these reasoning mistakes in others and in ourselves, I therefore provide you with the five most common logical fallacies found in the media. Number one, ad hominem. So you're at the dinner table discussing the immigration issue with your friend and claim that a politician from X party commented that having unrestricted immigration into the country could in some ways be detrimental. Your friend, furious at the other end of the table, responds, ah, but why would you listen to that politician? Didn't you hear the scandal? He cheated on his wife. As you can see, what your friend is doing is not attacking the argument itself, but the person from which the argument comes. In other words, instead of responding why it is that immigration is not detrimental to the country, which would be the proper way to respond, he brings up characteristics of the politician that are absolutely irrelevant to the subject at hand. Whether he cheated or not on his wife has nothing to do with whether he's right or wrong. Number two, the moralistic fallacy. You happen to stumble upon a controversial paper that discusses the evolutionary roots of rape, proposing a theory that as observed in other species, males with lower chances of reproductive success in the tribe in fear of genetic extinction, 
may face the option of using either force to spread their genes or let their DNA be left out. This outrages you, to which you say, but rape is wrong and horrible. It can't be natural. These scientists are crazy. This is the mistake of assuming that whatever is morally wrong must not be natural. To say that there is a biological basis for rape is not the same as saying that it is morally right or justifiable. Number three, the political correctness fallacy. So you're at your college campus attending a talk by a widely known and controversial economist. He happens to disagree with the gender wage gap. He provides evidence for why studies that show that there is a gap are only taking average salaries into account and aren't taking into consideration other crucial factors such as occupation and working hours. Suddenly, you hear a big crowd at the back screaming, Get this misogynist out of campus! How can you say that men and women are paid equally? That's offensive! What these confused college students are engaging in is in the political correctness fallacy. North American campuses are increasingly restricting their freedom of speech in name of not being offensive towards particular religious, ethnic, or social groups. This, however, shields irrational argument from criticism under the banner of treating everyone equally. As you can see, it doesn't matter whether the fact that there is no wage gap is offensive to you or not. This does not change the truth. Number four, the red herring fallacy. You're watching a debate about the existence of God and its relation to morality. It is a theist against an atheist. The theist says, If there is no God, then how can you say that killing or raping is wrong? To which the atheist responds, there needs to be no supreme deity to determine moral truths. Were these handed over by a god, they wouldn't be objective, but rather arbitrarily selected. To which the theist responds, But how are you atheists so sure about the non-existence of god? Science is not perfect after all. As you can see, what has happened here is that the conversation has derailed from the initial topic at focus, which was the relationship of morality to God, to a conversation about science and its limits, two completely different things. Once the theist couldn't respond to the atheist counter-argument, he decided to change topics. And last but not least, reductio ad Hitlerum. So you're watching a debate on a popular media outlet, and two people are arguing about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Person A claims, Israel should stop building illegal settlements in the West Bank in order to improve the chances of having peace. Person B responds, You sound like a Nazi! You want to remove the Jews from their land? Where do you want them to live? You sound like Hitler! Although this one might be a little subtler, it is clear after a while what person B is doing. Modern political discussion has ways of shutting down an argument simply by accusing other people of either being racist, Nazi-like, or misogynist. In no way did person A claim any hatred towards Jews or removing them from where they are. He simply stated that seizing the construction of settlements would be beneficial for both parties. To astronomically, I repeat, different things well anyways folks thank you for your time please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy okay the video. okay now we finish uh, so i hope you can understand you can understand the video you can understand the, the fallacy and you can understand the logical fallacy and you can understand the type five type of medical fallacy yeah i will provide you the video i will give you in the maybe uh, in the e-learning i will provide you the video in the learning so you can watch it so i will provide you the link so better for you <laughs> okay uh thank you for group uh, thank you to uh, group three
Okay. Thank you to group one, group, first group. Thank you to group one uh, presenting about topic three. And then next week we will uh, have uh, group two presenting topic four. Uh, topic topic four is about uh, psychology and sociology. Yeah. So if you uh, like to uh, group group two, I want to want to adjust. I want to want to add some creativity in their presentation. Uh, you can add or, or you can remove you can get rid of some lecture depend on you as as long as uh, you can deliver the core for your the, the chapter that like is what is psychology what the type of psychology what the type of sociology okay you can add you can remove some of the slide if you want to uh, you can you can put additional info you can put the journal info or something like that and yeah, you can put the video uh, so it will be more interesting and uh, your 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 clique or your friend will be able to understand what you you're trying uh, will enjoy what you're trying to present okay i will upload the video the video the the recording for this class in the YouTube so I will provide you the link and you can watch uh, it back yeah, from YouTube 